What's going on, guys? Bonafide Hustler here, and today we are on episode two of 10 items that sold for good cash. Now, these items are selling on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and my antique booth. So um, we're going to be going through 10 items. Actually, there are, there are more than 10 items in the pictures that we're going to be looking at today, but I just call it 10 just because it sounds like a great number. Um, I want to make sure that I sound good, right? If you're listening to this show right now, then um, let me know if the mic sounds all right. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do one of these shows in the evening time, but uh, we got one viewer, two viewers. Let's see if we can get more viewers in here. What's up, Hector? Good to see you. Um, yeah, put a comment and that's how it kind of works. If you catch me during the day and this show is going on, then there's, there's a likelihood that it's actually live and you can actually, you know, type in comments as you can see on the screen right now on to your right. We have Hector, we have Mario. What is up, Mario? Good to see you, man. Uh, we have Frank Chupetta, Stephen Stafford. Oh, I got a good, me I got a good message from Stephen uh, this morning. That was pretty cool. Uh, Thriftology, Thriftology here. A lot of the same people that, uh, well, not a lot of the same. Fifty percent of the same people that I saw yesterday. <clears throat> Husband, wife, PA pickers. Hi, what is going on? So it sounds like, you know, it sounds good, right? Car, car on the road, car on the road. What is going on? And uh, <clears throat> we'll get right to the show here in one second. I just want to make sure that I sound good and uh, we can get well on our way. What's up, Tony Young? Um, I don't even know if you can invite followers, but hey, guys, if you can share this somehow, I mean, go ahead and do it. You know, I know everyone's part of some Facebook group of some sort or maybe your personal Facebook. But, you know, it's one of those things uh, that uh, helps me out, you know. Um, yeah, the day shows are pretty cool. I, I was wondering about that thriftology. I mean, people must have night shifts or maybe they're just stay-at-homes. Um, but catching my stuff during the day is a little hard to do unless you're an entrepreneur or you have a night shift kind of thing or you just don't work and uh, maybe you work more from home passively for some reason. So anyway, um, I do have an idea of another show that I do want to do, um, which uh, maybe you guys can give me a yes or no on it, right? Um, but I might do a show <clears throat> as well or a series of shows called higher thinking, which is almost an everything goes kind of show, but it'll be on my, it'll be on my bonafide hustler channel and you could talk about all things hustling, you know, whatever else, lifestyle, fitness, motivation, inspiration, all that kind of stuff. But higher thinking, something that the goal of the show is to really get some really good gold nuggets out of the show to make you guys, uh, you know, understand what it takes to live a really fun uh, you know, lifestyle and everything like that, a uh, lifestyle that's crafted around your dreams, right? Um, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then let me know. Okay, so let's get right to the program. I'm going to do a screen share. That's kind of how we do it here. And then you're going to see uh, items that are in the uh, screen share. And the items are from 2013. <clears throat> These are items that I think are worthy of talking about. And some are home runs and some are just kind of like good cash, you know, but uh, it's very important that uh, we learn through different kinds of items. So some of the items are related, but you'll see how. Um, but yeah, if you enjoy the show, thank you, Oz, by the way. If you enjoy the show, most important thing you can do is hit the like button, right? If you don't want to put a comment or you just want to sit back, hit the like button. That'll greatly help me out. Let's go right to the screen share right now. And let me get to this thing. All right. If you guys can see what I am looking at, let me know. What do you guys see right here? Tell me what you guys see and tell me if you can see the mouse pointing on the screen going in circles. If we can get to that part, then we're good to go and start the show. So let me know if you can see this picture. I'll give it a little bit of time to see what anybody says. But yeah, we want to make sure that everyone can kind of see what's going on or else the screen share is not working. Okay, so everyone's saying Bose speaker, which is correct. So we have a Bose speaker, which is the, basically the sound dock. You know, there's different, I think there's like sound dock one, sound dock two. I think this is original sound dock, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this right here is, uh, you know, they come in two different colors. You'll probably find the white one a whole lot out there or the cream colored one which maybe it is white and it just turns to cream colored over the time you know um but you kind of want to find <clears throat> this thing with the cord very important to find this the cord and the remote control because the remote control uh it goes through one of these little holes and the sensors in there you wouldn't be able to tell but uh the remote control through these is kind of important now if you can find all three of those things right and uh and you can get you can make sure that 
Um, some of them have these little plates that go in here. Like this one didn't, right? So I think this one was destined for eBay. It sold for like $57, right? Um, but uh, I see a comment coming in from Hector. You're right. If you can only find pieces of these things, you know, the, the remote can sell for 20 plus FBA, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. My last one sold for 27 bucks. But either way, if you can find it all together, okay, like all together, then I would definitely test it out and then ship it off to Amazon FBA. Because on Amazon FBA, these things are going, the last I checked, between $90 and $110. Um, so, yeah, I've sold um, about three in the past year and a half on Amazon FBA for that much. And I found them at garage sales and stuff for five to 10 bucks. <clears throat> so you want to find the remote, the cord and test it out. It's really easy to do if you have an iPod laying around or, you know, one of those things. So if you do get an iPod guys, like don't just throw it away or you, you can lot iPods up and put them into eBay, but don't forget to keep one. All right. One is important to keep so you can test out things that are docs for iPods. Okay. So there you go right there. That's the Bose thing. As you can see, you know, it's, an, it's a nice looking little Bose deal. Um, some will say refurbished on the back. You know, you might find one that says refurbished, which is, um, you know, not a huge deal. Usually if I find refurbished things and it's just a sticker that says refurbished, I will definitely heat gun the sticker off. It's just what I do. But, uh, you know, if you want to just put refurbished in your list and you can, I just don't think it really matters if it tests out and stuff like that. So what's going on, Top Dog Deal? It's good to see you. <clears throat> People are shouting out my name. I'll, I really appreciate that. So let's talk about the next item, which go in, it coincides with something I talked about the other day. Maybe it was last week. Um, I don't know if it was on an like internal green room show or what, but I, I talked about, no, it was in garage sale for profit. So I'm, I'm doing a series on my channel and the next uh, installment is tomorrow, which is the third episode of um, how to garage sale for profit. Anyway, and how, and how to garage sale for profit, I think episode one, I talked about um, building your knowledge base and going through completed eBay listings and all this kind of stuff and how important it is, um, you know, to do that kind of stuff. If you don't have guidance, like a really good, uh, Facebook group or a guide or, you know, constant bolos being thrown your way, then you're gonna have to do your own kind of like research. <clears throat> well, anyway, I was uh, walking down Congress Avenue here in Austin, Texas, and I walked into a boot store and uh, I saw an old mailbag above all the cool boots and everything. And I was like, man, how, how much is that old mailbag? But then it didn't have a price. And I think it was like not for sale, but it was a canvas, amazing bag. It was beautiful. And I was like, well, one day I want to own one of those. So I started researching it. And I figured out then, yeah, they're expensive for sure. Obviously, they're really pretty. Um, and um, come to find out that, you know, there's a market for really well-made canvas bags with leather accents, right? So it led me to this other brand, Orvis, which I know about Orvis. I just didn't know they were making these bags called Bat and Kill Bags. And uh, shortly after researching the Bat and Kill Bag, I'm talking like within weeks, I found my first one in a Goodwill. So this is what it looked like right here. All right, pretty cool. Um, it's not a terribly large bag whatsoever, um, but it is an Orvis bat and kill, uh, canvas with leather accents bag and in pretty good condition too. There's the Orvis thing right there, as you can see. <clears throat> so it's a canvas leather and little bronze accents, or maybe there was, it's definitely not gold or anything like that, but like, it's more than likely bronze, kind of like the stuff that you see on Doonies. Um, this right here had a, uh, you know, a, a little, what, what do you call it? A plaque of some sort on the back that had the person's, you know, initials, but you know, that didn't, that didn't scare me. I mean, it's really easy to take that stuff off. And quite honestly, like this is really cool. If you pull up on an airplane or whatever, and you got one of these really awesome bags. Yeah. It's definitely individuality. It's definitely built to last and it's a really pretty bag. So the Orvis bat and kill, I believe sold for this one sold for, I want to say 80 something. Um, and it was really cheap. I mean, it was, it was not that expensive whatsoever. So um, I would think like six and below. So yeah, pretty nice bag right there. Good profits to be made on that. What's up, Inge Bowman? Good to see you. And if you guys are enjoying the show, man, don't forget to comment and like, you know, give your remarks and everything because I can see those remarks and I can see the comments. Um, don't make any nasty comments now. Uh, I'm just kidding. You can make nasty comments if you really want to. But uh, this show is all about learning, you know. I don't know how that nasty comments are going to make that any better but um let's talk about the next item right here <clears throat> and uh all these items were shot in my office floor i was trying just a different uh you know shot process and seeing if it looked pretty good on the office floor and now the office floor looks even worse than this because homeboy didn't seal it properly so now it looks really bad but anyway 
taking you back in the day where my office floor actually looked pretty cool, stained concrete. Um, so these are book, Brooks Ravenna um, or Ravenna. Well, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, uh, really nice coloring. First of all, I found these at a Goodwill across the freeway from my house. They were like uh, seven bucks or so, and uh, these sold for fifty-four ninety-nine or so. So um, you know, real nice, a nice total twenty-seven dollars in my pocket, and that's after all the fees and the shipping and everything. Beautiful shoe, you know, it's got a really nice deep purple along with black and you're probably wondering like I would have never popped on that But quite honestly, you got to turn shoes over guys and you got to research a little bit because I didn't know jack about this shoe But I did like the brand right Brooks is really a really strong brand. So, you know Here's what the underside looked like. What do you guys think about that? Tell me real quick. What do you guys think about that bottom side? Would you buy a shoe that had a bottom side that looked like this? Tell me what do you think? Let me know and what do you call that? Man, super bona fide fans or super subscribers are going to know my the, my the words that I pick when I look at this bottom of this shoe. What are the words that I use? Very curious to see if anybody knows. Yeah, they're nice shoes. I mean, look at that. I mean, they're in really good condition. They were nice. They didn't need any cleaning. These are not FBA. No, these were on uh, eBay. <clears throat> so these sold on eBay. And same with the Orvis Batten kill. That was an eBay item as well. Uh, Brian Kingsbury, I would sell ten. I would pay ten tops. Yeah, you know, um, honestly, I didn't pick them up until I saw the market on eBay sold. So be real careful. Don't just be popping on things that look all super cool. I mean, you got to do a little bit of research. But nubs on <laughs> nubs on nubs. All right. So I picked them up for seven bucks, Brian. And um, yeah, so nubs on nubs on the bottom. Now you might be able not. You might not be able to really see the nubbies on this one. But if you look at this back section right here. I mean, we can see nubs on nubs right there pretty quickly. Um, and that's basically the, uh, you know, seeing the primary nub, which is the big, you know, piece of rubber. Then these little, little hatch nubs right here that are like the indicators of the true wear of the shoe. And you can kind of see that they're in very good condition. I mean, look at this one right here. I mean, this one's like almost perfect. So uh, that's nubs on nubs in my book. Yeah. Nubs on nubs. That's right. People know what's up. All right, let's go to the next item. This one's going to be cool. I want you guys to really look out for these. If you didn't know about them, that's cool. If you did know about them, that's that's double cool. But finding them is a little tough. I say that when I found one last weekend. But anyway, I found one, I want, found one for 115 bucks. I'm assuming a test out. I should be able to get about 120 plus for it, right? It's not exactly the best color to buy because I have a silver one. But this was a blue one. This is the very first one I bought back in 2013. Uh, looks like August 10th, 2013. Looking at the dates right now. And um, two things, when you buy these, okay, so when you buy this Starbucks barista, you might like, what the hell, this thing's kind of stupid looking, right? First of all, it's an espresso machine, okay? So very important that uh, any, with any espresso machine, you have the steamer right here, you have the percolator, I believe that's what it's called, and then, uh, you know, real three-button, easy three-button setup, and then the steam is right here on a rotational knob. Behind it is a water tank back here, and then you have a little drip tray that has a little drawer. So, you know, finding these complete is very hard to do. I actually found one that was, okay, about 99% complete last weekend, and I have to test it. But uh, this one right here is about, um, in my book, about 50% complete. But it happens to be the 50%, the most important 50% complete one. Uh, if you're going to find them 50% complete, you want to find them like this, okay? So basically, this was up here, and it was, you know, twisted on there. <clears throat> so I guess whoever donated it. Um, I'm just like, oh, thank you so much because the percolator was actually in the machine. This is easily the most important piece besides this drip tray, okay? So, like, this is so important, okay? Because without this, I mean, you really can't do anything. So, um, I got this, and this is what the percolator looks like up close. The percolator on this this thing right here, I mean, honestly, is between 35 and 40 bucks alone, okay? So, let's talk about what I purchased this thing for. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was $10.99 or so. Um, and it's really nice, you know, percolators in good condition. So the percolator could have sold for 35 to 40 bucks pretty quickly, but didn't do it, right? Um, actually, Eric, the college picker, he was in town at the time that I got this, and uh, he tested it for me. He showed me how it worked perfectly fine and everything like that, right? And it's a really beautiful <clears throat> espresso machine. There's the drip tray, and underneath the drip tray is another little place to get water, and then underneath it, that's a drawer. And then the back of it looks like this. Of course, I cleaned it up before I sent this one off. Um, it's beautiful. So they make them in different colors, green, uh, yellow, blue, red. And uh, when you start getting into the different colors, that's when the price starts going up. All right, so take a guess what this thing sold for, guys. Go ahead and guess real quick. 
Um, you know, it's not like some astronomical number, but, um, you know, it's definitely decent, right? What do you guys think it's sold for? Let's talk about that real quick. And I'll still rifle through the pictures so you can, guys can get this ingrained in your head, all right? The Starbucks barista machine is very much a wanted product right now. In fact, you should see how big the uh, the market is on eBay for this thing. You would never believe how extensive the market is for this thing. It's really cool. Frank Byers, you're a little high, but let's take a look. James Myers, you're a little low. So now we know it's between $100 and $200. I'll just, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll make it. There you go. Frank Chapetta got it right. It's a hundred. It sold for $119.99 on eBay. So that's definitely something you want to look out for. Okay. So there's your bolo for the week, I guess, because man, I don't find them, you know, that often. I probably find this on a rate of one per year. Um, I found three of these in my, yeah, about 2013 to 2016. I found about three of these once a year. And the last one I found was literally like last weekend. So um, there are other accessories you can get for this thing, such as a uh, a coffee grains kind of like scoop thing. Um, and then they have a tamper device that goes on the percolator. So it tampers the coffee down into a flat thing, you know, to make it all nice before it goes into the drip. Um, it also comes with a VHS tape, um, comes with two shot glasses and a milk um, a milk steamer cup that has a thermometer attached to it. So if you really want it completely complete, then, uh, yeah, you're, it's very hard to find it super complete. But the one last weekend I had was like 99% complete. So there you go. There's a really good bolo, right? I hope you like it. Um, all right. So yesterday on episode one of 10 things that sold for good cash, I talked to you guys about camcorders and how, um, you know, I hustle them all the time. So here is another camcorder. Um, this is not a high eight format one. This is a DV format, which is smaller than high eight. So when you're dealing with camcorders, especially retro camcorders, because this is not vintage, right? This is definitely not VHS or, you know, huge. This is actually pretty, this is a small kind of item. You know, if it's your hand goes right through the little strap thing right there. And, uh, you know, right there actually. And it's pretty small. So um, digital video is a very small cassette. It goes into this one area right here. In fact, maybe I have a picture of it. Let me see. Maybe not. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, so the DV goes uh, into not this area right here, but it goes into the bottom of it. And this area is for what's called a memory stick. So you can take still photographs with this button right there. Um, but what's really, really interesting about this and what makes it a good seller, whether it's a high eight format or a DV format, is what's called the night shot function, which is for total pervs, man. Honestly, like it's been said that night shot, you can see through clothing or articles of clothing. So these uh, night shot cameras, and this is one of them, it says night shot right there. If you look through the viewfinder, it says night shot. <clears throat> and if you look on the side, it says night shot and super night shot for super pervs. So <laughs> Yeah, you know, just get excited if you see Night Shot, but if you're a perv, you're probably really excited. Um, so there you go, right? There's a digital video. It's the smallest of all. It's, you know, it's a really small camera. Um, it's got room for a little light up top here because they get so small now that, uh, you know, they couldn't have the built-in light in these. So here's the front of it. And with the high eight ones, there was a, a light right here. It's called Zero Lux. Or I don't know. It was something, there was a light right here that you could turn on and off. And if you were like filming in dark, um, and you didn't want night shot, you could still illuminate your subject's face. Well, now you have to get an attachment because they couldn't fit the light on, so it goes right there. Um, nevertheless, something you want to hustle, okay? Definitely want to be hustling these things. In fact, uh, digital video ones, uh, if you find them with the cord, I mean, the main thing to find is the cord that charges the battery that's on the back of the item. So here's the battery right here. You can see it. And then here's the main cord. So once you find this and that, I mean, you're pretty much like, okay, I would probably ship this to FBA. And I can't quite honestly remember where this one went, but uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, then I did buy it for $20 at a garage sale and I put it to FBA and it did sell for $149.99. So if this is the one I'm thinking of, I think it is this one. So Anyway, tested it all out. I do have a digital video cassette at my house. I have every cassette possible at my house. So I can test any one of these formats. So something you want to keep. When you find these with extra things and extra cassettes, do not throw the cassettes away. Make sure you keep one out of every format in your house. So when you come across them in the wild, you can record on them, play them back, make sure that everything goes good. And if you get a chance, keep a memory stick or two. And it's so antiquated, this stuff. You have no idea. But at the same time, you know what? Don't ask any questions. If you can test it out, you can make money. 
<laughs> anyway, let's go to the comments real quick. Um, let me do a reverse little screen share here. Stop screen sharing. What's up, guys? I'm back. Um, you guys enjoying the show? Let me know if you are finding some tiny bona fide tidbit of value, man. You gotta, you gotta hit that like button. All right, we've got 13 people here that are hitting it, and they feel like you know, like there's some value here. And now, if I'm doing my math right, we got. 22 people that are undecided whether it's going to be a down vote or an up vote but either way burn the calorie and hook me up um it's pretty easy to do i mean it really all you do is you you, you kind of guide your mouse little thing down to like this thumbs up or thumbs down thing and just just like your emotions like you're like i feel great and i like this show then you would put a thumbs up if you're like i hate myself and uh why do i have a night shot camera he totally called me out for being a perv you know then maybe you like want to have a down vote. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah. So thanks a lot. Oh, wow. Some people are actually hitting a down vote. Oh, I probably shouldn't have asked for that. No, uh, it's all good. Whatever. Um, but I really appreciate it. Brooke Hayes. Um, I appreciate it. James Myers. I wonder who did hit this like button. You can go ahead and say it. I will, sh I will shout your name out on the comment feed right now. And then we'll get into items number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. So uh river city creative i like that name hit the like button that's cool uh brooke hayes was, is burning her bona fide fingers right now that's good global gibby i like that name too smash it very good math ain't adding up hit that like button james myers that's right you're my best friend today aren't you um who else we got hitting this like button i know i saw another one up here somewhere you might be thinking like <clears throat> why the hell does he always ask about this like button thing quite honestly it's it's a testament to the content and it's also you know, it tells me to do more of these shows for you later. So um, it's one of those things. You know, I look back at the thumbs button all the time. And if I'm getting, a, you know, in excess of 20% down votes in any one of my videos, I'm, prob I'm probably like, I'm not continuing that sort of filming or that series type of a video. It doesn't make any sense. But if there's a whole lot of upvotes, then I know that the audience likes that type of material. Does that make sense? So anyway, that's the reason why. It's not like whoever gets the most upvotes wins the day. And it has nothing to do with that. But it's more of an analytic thing so I can just visually see like what's going right. So uh, care, care on the road. I was first. I love the bag most. Cool. Okay, so uh, there we go. Um, yeah, it looks like whoever had a down vote now rechanged their mind. Maybe they're selling their night shot camera um, and they're getting onto a new lead. They're turning over a new leaf. All right. That's good. That's good. Good, good, good. One less perp. Okay. Uh, let's go into the, uh, I, I make jokes about stupid things, but Hey, you know, that's just what the show is about. It's about learning, having fun. And it's, uh, during the day too. So it's, and it's before the green room hangout, which that, that hangout time, I gotta be real serious since you know, that's real business talk, but, um, Hey, while I have you guys here real, real quick, if you like what you're seeing, right, and you're like, gosh, I wish you could just make more of these shows, or I just wish I could learn more like this, and like, you know, the, the, the high points of the item, like the spread of what they sell for, and like things to look after, like n things to like note when you're considering buying the item. Guys, there is one tool that you got to have on your phone right here, and it's free down below, okay? Yes, it puts you on an email list, but on the email list has 100 plus crafty emails from the admins of the green room, all right, that has a lot of good content. But when it comes down to like amazing content that you could literally like read at the DMV when you're bored, in the bathroom if you're bored, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, you can check out this PDF and uh, put it on your phone, all right? and get smarter by the weekend. That's what you gotta do. So, <laughs> uh, Thriftology, dude, this is like a free class from a legit mentor professor, free knowledge, what's not to like? You know, I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, so let's go into the other items that I wanna share with you guys, okay? If you allow, I will share. Let's go into the screen share, where is, okay, I think, let me make sure that we can see this. Let's get away from this pervy camera. Just kidding. The, is this not the perviest shot you've ever seen in your entire life? Like, of course they know that the night shot's working, right? I, I make this shot right here. But I made another shot just so I can show that the viewfinder is working as well. Only problem is this shot looks like hell perv, right? This is like, oh, man. I, I don't even, this just show. this is like the dude in your bushes, man, that's like looking right into your house. This is the worst shot of all to put. I mean, I could have done anything else but this. But anyway, this is like, this is it, man. This could be the reason why, I mean, 
yeah, I took pictures of this thing because I likely, um, you know, I put it on FBA and this is the one I think it is, but I took pictures because I was going to put it on eBay and then I checked FBA and I was like, all right, forget it. I'm sending it in. So no one really got to see this creepy picture. All right. Yeah, I know. Totally X-rated. Super perv shot right here. It could, hey, it could be worse. Trust me. It could be way worse. But this is pretty, this is pretty nightmarish in my book. Okay. Let's talk about the next item. So this right here, what do we, this is like, uh, what do we call these things, guys? What do you think this is? What can you see? Tell me what you think. And no, it's not space age cookies. It's not space age pancakes either. What is this? Tell me what this is. No, it's not something I found in the ghetto. <laughs> it's not a pop-up tent. Um, it's not a bag of weed. Well, it kind of does look like a bag of weed right here. Um, but no, it's not a bag of weed. Uh, a space cake maker? No. Frank Chipetta is right. So <laughs> a lot of funny comments coming in. All right, so let's let's look at this. This came from my neighbor, actually. My neighbor, uh, Craig, walked across the street one day and was like, hey, you're, you're doing eBay and blah, 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 blah. He's like, I got some stuff you want to sell. Now, the whole problem is when I hear that, it's usually crap. I don't like usually selling other people's crap because it's usually what I like. To, it's like other people's crap, like true crap. And I'm like, dude, now I just got to like play along and like act like I put it in my store, but I didn't, you know? Um, but no, anyway, he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. you like, you do the eBay and let's, uh, let's get a little deal going. You get 50% of this thing, rrr. you know? So, um, he gave me this stack of little mercury rims. Um, and yeah, mercury logo. And these are mercury hub, I guess hubcaps are not rims technically. Cause if you try to put a tire around this, you wouldn't go very far. Right. And, uh, yeah. So these are just hubcaps, man. Look at that, dude sure we didn't go to the ghetto and get these things no i'm just kidding um you know this is definitely the bona fides garage when you see goodwill stickers that are just like on the ground right um and uh so yeah i listed these on ebay it took a while honestly this took like two months to sell maybe even three but i think they ended up selling like selling for about 67.99 or so so that's pretty cool and they're new right and so that came off some 80s i think mercury or maybe even below 80s but real nice. I mean, look at this. Dude, this is like straight swag right there. Look, you know, really cool. Like, hell would put it on a Mercury. Just put them on a Toyota Sienna, dude. Floss the hell out of that soccer mom mobile. Um, yeah, real cool. They're hub, little hub cappies. Um, <laughs> it's very, very, very neat. So, um, but yeah, he, you know, once I got it all sold, he's like, hey, you just take them. And he's like, we walked to his garage and he was like, rrr, 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 rrr. like what else do you want to like send? You want this like lamp with a dude on it and like a chick from like the Victorian age. I was like, no, I don't want that lamp. And he was like, well, what about these hubcaps? Rrr, rrr, rrr. You know? So I took the hubcaps and that was what I wanted. Um, I thought they were going to sell for a lot more, honestly, but, uh, you know, Hey, $67. I'm good with that. <laughs> he sounds like a cartoon. He kind of is man. Honestly, like he comes over all the time. And um, he sits in a chair. Well, he's kind of like, he's, look, he's like out of shape, right? And I have these really cheap, I'll tell you a funny story right now. You know what? I'll tell you a really funny story. Um, well, there's a lot of funny stories about Mr. Crego, but um, so anyway, um, he lives not directly across the street from me, but like if directly across the street from me was 12 o'clock, then he'd be like the one o'clock position, right? He's the house next to the 12 o'clock position. So I get to see him like all the time. Like I go out of my house and I literally see like Craig's life, right? And uh, he's a funny kind of guy. He's, yeah, he's got kind of out of shape. He still walks every day and everything. Um, but he, 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 there's so many funny things. There, there's these chairs I have outside of my house that I bought at a garage sale for five bucks. And um, we're trying to eke out every day that we can get out of these chairs right like we can we're trying to get just a little bit more time out of these chairs but they are creaking and kind of swinging around a little bit they're not built well right but they're the adriondack style so they're really nice looking um we tried to support them a little bit better with some dowel rods and stuff like back in the day but for five bucks like i'm not gonna be uh, you know that's one of the ways you can become a millionaire pretty quickly in life you know i just learned through my parents is just dress normal uh you know be as frugal as you can and um you know, have fun with it, right? So I find these two, I was actually with Brock that day and we found two Adriandac style chairs, okay? Um, <clears throat> and they're, they've clearly been out in the elements for a little bit. And uh, 
but they were still kind of intact. Of course, when I sat in them, it kind of swayed a little bit. I was like, eh, okay. You know, this thing's like kind of a ticking time bomb before, you know, your ass hits the ground and like, you know, a pile of wood just flies up everywhere. So um, anyway, Craig comes over like periodically and he sat in those chairs. My dad sat in those chairs numerous times. Like everyone sat in these chairs, but now they're getting to that point where, you know, like I think they're on their like last splinter, right? Like there's like one little splinter sitting in there that's like holding you know like it's like that one little screw out of the machine you take that screw out and the whole machine just falls apart so like this thing is on like one tiny bona fide splinter left and craig sat on it like not too long maybe two weeks ago and this is what led to the bona fide splinter anyway he sat on it and he was like and as soon as he sat on it we just heard <laughs> and even he was like and everyone around us was like you know and so we know that that chair is on its final like day. It's on its final, you know, we might have to pull the plug on it before someone gets seriously hurt. So anyway, that's one funny story about Craig. But he does come over a lot, and he's asked me to hustle other things in his house, which I don't want to do, but the Mercury hubcaps I did. So anyway, damn, Craig. Yeah, he's cool too. So uh, he's a really good neighbor. He's not a bad neighbor whatsoever. I don't want you to think he's a bad neighbor. I've had bad neighbors. In fact, I do have one bad neighbor. But we'll talk about that one day. I do have one, which I'm very close to like punching his lights out. But I'm not going to, right? Well, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, depending on how nice he is in the next coming months, we will see. Um, let's talk about the next thing on the screen share. Let's get back to these swag rims. Look at that. Okay. What's the next thing on the uh, bona fide agenda here? I don't even know how many items I've put in this slideshow. I just call it 10 because it sounds cool. But there damn near could be... 15 or so. I have no idea. <laughs> Bonafide throw a Hulk smash for real. I'm telling you, like this guy would not stand a chance. Like I could probably flex my pinky and his head will explode. Like, so, um, yeah, but this guy has committed serious bonafide offenses in the cul-de-sac and I am about to like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to do some, I'm not going to do something. I'm not going to say I'm going to do something because then if like any one of the people here on the hangout has to be on like a trial, for example, or a jury, then they're going to be like, well, yeah, I heard bonafide say, you know, this and like, yeah, so I don't want to get convicted of anything, but um, yeah, this guy is getting on my bona fide nerves. So here's the shoe that we want to talk about. These are <laughs> these are Vibram Five Fingers, okay? So um, they had their rage back in the day, and they still have a little bit of a rage, but then it uh, they got a class action lawsuit on them, which I actually got paid the other day from that lawsuit. I had to wait two years, um, and I got paid like a dollar and eight cents, like something really stupid. Um, but anyway, um, these are Vibram Five Fingers. Um, and they're like feet for your feet. I mean, I don't, uh, that's the only way I can really kind of say it, you know, look at them and it looks like freaking Smurf feet. So they come in different colors. They come in men's, women's, and they come in, uh, thicknesses, right? Uh, you know, depending on, do you want it to be lace or not lace or just elastic? Um, they were originally barefoot, minimalist, free running kind of shoes. And then just people started getting all kinds of stress fractures and crap. So class action lawsuit, blah, 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 blah. And uh, now they're still around, but they're just, it's just, you don't really see them really much of any places. Um, they were kind of fun, fun to work out. And I had a couple, I have, I actually have two pairs. They're okay to work out. And um, they're just, you feel like you're just walking around barefoot wherever you are. Um, and that's okay. But it was like when you get into like urban sprawl, you know, like buildings and downtown, you look like a freaking idiot. Like, so there was a time where people would wear these and they'll be like, dude, you look like an idiot. And like now after the class action, action lawsuit, it's like, now you really look like an idiot. So, um, I wouldn't advise buying them. So, but I had to like, see what the rage was all about. And, you know, it has its pros and cons. I mean, it was really cool to like stand up paddleboard with them and do things where like the river bottom was kind of jacked and, you know, you didn't want to, uh, step on any broken glass, for example. So this would help a lot in that situation. Um, but these are, these are vibrant five fingers. Um, they have different models. There's a code inside, which damn, I didn't show it on these pictures, but there's a code inside. It's usually a four digit code. And in fact, it's always a four digit code. It could be three, seven, five, three, three, four, five, three, eight. It's any, you know, different ones, but these I believe are the speed XCs or I mean, these could be Belica. Um, and when I say that, those are the models that you want to be looking for. Speed XC, Belica, Komodo, and uh, Spyridon. Spyridon or whatever it's called. There's like four really decent models to look for. This is definitely one of them. Um, these, if you find them in decent condition and the bottoms look pretty good, 
as you can see right here, there's not much wear on these. So these could sell. And anytime I buy these, because I've, I've flipped so many five fingers, you guys have no idea. Like, I'm not even kidding. If you ask me, if someone paid me 500 bucks today, I could look for all my five fingers pictures, and I guarantee you there'd be there'd be over 40 of them, 40 pairs sold. Like, I've, I've sold a crap load of these things. I'm serious. Maybe even 50 pairs. But no one's going to pay me 500 bucks. And there's no way that I need to prove any of that to you guys. But uh, just take my word for it. So... There we do. There we, there we go. We have it here. It's in my possession. I sold it and it's, um, yeah, for about 54 is about average for a Speed XC. Um, if it gets kind of crappy looking, then about 50 to $44. Um, and anytime I pop on these, it's usually like six and below. All right. There we go. Pretty, right? I have found them in like amazing conditions. Like it, the funny thing is, it's not uncommon to find these in like terrific conditions because the, the, the fit on these are so precise. Like the fits off, like if the fit is off by one number, man, it's like you feel like you're wearing water skis. So anyway, let's go to the next shoe. Who knows why this shoe is valuable right here? Let's go into the comment feed really quickly and see who knows why this shoe is valuable. And I'll read some comments. Oh, a bunch of LOLs and LM LMAOs. Uh, follow the trend. Yoga. Outdoors. Feel the ground beneath you. <laughs> Seems like foot fetish guy who owns Nightwatch camera would buy those. You're right, dude. Nightshot bro Nightshot brother is going to uh, buy those shoes right there because they're creepy. He's got to buy all things that are creepy, right? So these are now officially creepy shoes for creepy people. And this person still has his Nightshot camera. It might be the same person that thumbs down my video that bought all this. But who knows why these uh, boots are, <laughs> are valuable. Why would anyone buy these boots? And so why, what kind of boots are these? Why would anyone buy them? And then the last question is, what are the keywords you put into the title when you hustle these shoes? Let's see. They're from the 1800s, no. But good guess, Brooke Hayes. Deadstock, no. Uh, all leather, pretty much all leather. Yeah, they're pretty, I mean, for the and hipster. Yeah, pretty good. Hipster ankle, ankle. There you go. Um, okay, so these right here are Clark's Desert Boots. Thank you, Hector. That's a great thing to put on here. So you can put ankle and chukka. These are Clark's Desert Boots. See that right there? When you look inside, it says Clark's Originals, and it says Desert Boot. The Desert Boot is one of their lead-selling items that Clark's has ever made, okay? And it's a boot that kind of looks like this. It's kind of boot that you would find someone wearing in Bonnaroo and Lollapalooza, music festivals, uh, little painter dudes that are, like, uh, you know, living in Brooklyn, uh, people that are interested in to, um, how do I say it, um, crafty-type beers and skinny jeans and all that kind of stuff, kind of like hipsters right so in the title on ebay you're gonna want to put chukka ankle clark's desert boot gosh if you don't put clark's desert boot or desert boot you're toast like you have to put clark's desert boot ankle chukka and then men's and the size and that should be suffice that's all you need you can put leather but it's in it's implied that it's leather because that's just the way a desert boot is the desert boots are all leather they could be suede but they're still you know it's still leather um and the undersole is going to be gummy, right? So if you find them like this, and this undersole is in really good condition because if this gets real worn right here, it's going to turn almost black. So this one's in great condition. See how the edges are nice and sharp almost? This this thing is so comfortable. It was like an 11 and a half. So, uh, you know, one half size a little too small for me. I would have totally kept them. It was interesting. It was really interesting. I remember that this one, I had to take a brush to it because it had all these little specks of like sand. I don't know what this hipster did, man. I think he went to the beach and then he like whipped out his craft beer and started painting something. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but like this dude brought his boots to the beach and wore them. And you can see these little specks of sand that I had to get off. But, you know, damn little hipster dudes, like, why you got to be messing up my sales? But it's a really nice tone. It's got that almost like wine colored leather, you know, it's brown, but it's like really deep, dark brown, really neat stuff. So uh, this was 11 and a half. I remember this. And um, Clark's Desert Boots are going to sell for 70 plus in this condition almost every time. Where's the, this is really the indicator of condition is really the undersole. So yeah, Burning Man, there you go. Um, <laughs> so yeah. You guys ever see 
a dude on the beach with desert boots, right? Like, why the hell are you on a beach when the boot says desert? Like, bro, get to a drier climate. Um, so let's talk about this. Boy, I almost did not buy this thing. And the reason why is because I was going, I was in a good neighborhood. I was garage selling. I, I know this one. Okay. So I, I know this hustle because this is one of those like, well, I went against my rules and it paid off. But it's like, that's really the worst thing that you want to happen. Because if you go against your rules and it pays off, then it makes you have to rethink the rule a little bit, right? So this right here is a deluxe tree house. It's all wood. And I was in a nice neighborhood of Austin. I wouldn't say it's it's nice. I wouldn't say it's affluent. It's not like, you know, super rich or anything, but it's nice. It's definitely nice. Average median housing uh, cost is about half a mil. Um, and this garage sale had so much pink stuff. Like literally like pink is my kryptonite, guys. It is like I get around a garage sale and I pull up to it. And um, and if I see pink, like the color pink, like I, I kind of cringe in my truck. And I'm like, Ugh. I turn into like a little raisin dude, right? And I get all like, Ugh, right? And, I, and by the time I pass it, like I get all my energy back and I'm like, I was close, almost died, right? So that's what happens when I see pink in a garage sale. I don't like it. It screams baby stuff and toddler stuff and all this crap that I just don't like. I don't like it. I don't mess with it. Like um, it's very rare to find baby things that are still sealed, right? And that's just kind of like my only play when it comes to those things is to find some Melissa Doug things or maybe it's really old school Brio cars or Thomas the Train Lot. I mean, that's the only real play that I have when it comes to pink stuff. But for the most part, I'd rather not become bona fide raising guy and like I would just pass it up. However, I actually uh, stopped at this garage sale and I was like, oh, there's so much pink. And I was like shriveling up and then... Uh, but I saw a lot of people there and I was like, oh God. So I got out and I barely had the energy to like even make it to the driveway. And then I saw something in a box and I was like, mm, you know, I started getting my, my mojo back and I went up to this item and uh, I did a blind buy, which is in bona fide terms. It's when you buy it without any research. This thing's huge, right? It was a really big box and it said all wooden pieces, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, oh, you know, I asked the person, has this been used or anything? And they're like, no, it's brand new. How much do you want for it? Three bucks? Okay, I don't care about losing three dollars, all right. But I do care about, uh, you know, getting down the street, getting away from the pink garage shield. But I don't want to le leave this huge box behind. I really don't. So I buy it, okay. And um, I buy it. I check on FBA and on FBA. Maybe this actually sold on eBay. Well, I have to take a look. Either way, I know what it sold for. Okay, thing sold for a hundred bucks, like within like no time whatsoever. So if I'm not mistaken, I think it was eBay actually. I think there was like one sold listing no it was ebay because there was like three in the past 90 days that had sold and they've all been built right and so this one had not been built it was brand new so it sold for 100 bucks it was a really really good flip actually but anyway yeah the reason why it's not a good thing is because you don't want things like that to work out because it, you start bending your rules and before you know it you find yourself at these pink garage sales making no money right so this is just one of those exceptions to the rule and uh shouldn't have done it but i did and it played out but i'm still back to my normal bona fide self and uh yeah okay so there it is it's really nice it's just a bunch of wood and some fake trees um for people that are four and up so i guess i could still play with this thing ha huh. that's pretty awesome actually they should have just put like my age and down that way i wouldn't have never touched it right but anyway, now, now I can definitely build it. If I ever find one of these again, and it's not new, I'm going to build this thing because I am within this age range. So next thing up to, oh, man. All right. Who's getting freaking nostalgic now, right? Who is getting nostalgic? Who's getting crazy? Yeah. I know someone out there knows what this thing is. This actually sold my booth, by the way. Ooh, man, that's some funk. Never mind. Let's get back to another picture. Maybe the dude with the night shot camera owned this thing. Anyway, uh, okay. So what do we know about this item? Have, have you guys ever seen these before? Who had the yellow one? So did you have a red or a yellow one? Which one did you have back in the day? And I know a lot of the people here on this show know what this thing is. Um, <laughs> I have no clue. That was after my time. Man, now I feel, now I feel old because I know I had one of these. I had a yellow one. And uh, it played the, you know, back then, I guess I was amused by the games because 
see back then we didn't have anything cool like cell phones and tablets and things like that it was like you were considered like a little rich boy you know if you had a vcr in your car with you know, like tv screens that were like attached to the back of a headrest with velcro like you were considered the coolest person ever um so like you know having something like this was uh, sort of advanced for a family and this was just a little teaching aid so the kids would shut up in the back of the car or wherever they are and it was pretty much damn near indestructible um but yeah you could play all kinds of games with it and there was a yellow one and a red one i believe so yeah the classic speak and spell and you can play games you can spell things and there's all kinds of like you know you can spell giraffe and push repeat and it says giraffe you know and um there's one term like once you guess something right i remember it would always say press go to do some more and so you would press go and which is the key right here anyway it's very 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 cool um i sold this in my booth for around I'm not mistaken, like $18. I popped on it for like a dollar. It was so cheap. No back to it. Oh, definitely some funk. Uh, yeah. So that right there is just the speaker mesh thing that makes sure that no dust gets to the speaker behind it. And as you can see, it looks like someone has paper clipped this thing to death, right? Because it's all scrunched to a corner. And now the speaker is, uh, you know, definitely visible. But it did work, right? Put some batteries in it to ghetto bona fide batteries like i didn't even have four of the same ones so i had to do three of these green ones and then one of these other c batteries but anyway so yeah definitely sold and that was a pretty good hustle you know um i was born during the time of transistor radios remote control for tv was me okay um let's go to the next item or oh, i don't even know if there's the next item nope not that what well, weird why are there a pair of pants out there um hmm, that's interesting I have no idea why I put this there. Okay, so I have a couple more things. All these last items are kind of interrelated. Now, this is one thing I want to teach you guys. First of all, um, when you're dealing with remote control or radio remote radio controlled cars, um, there's some mass produced ones and there's some, uh, you know, hobby grade ones, right? When it comes to mass produced stuff, I'm talking things that are found at like Toys R Us, Target, Kmart, all those places. You're going to deal with companies such as Newbright. Okay, it says Newbright. Uh, Nico and Tyco, right? For the most part, those are what most of them are made out of. And then maybe air hogs and whatever. So let's say five years ago or so, um, they built this one. It's just a crawler, right? They call it a crawler. This thing sucks so bad. It sucked so bad. However, the body of this vehicle is heavily sought after by hobby grade remote control or radio control enthusiasts. Just the top part. And probably the wheels too, but no one cares about this chassis and this crap underneath. No one cares about it because it just sucks so bad. So they put it on hobby grade crawlers and it's very tough. This is tougher than the best Lexan plastic that you can buy from a hobby store to put on your crawler. So you go to the, you know, you go into eBay and you try to look up new bright FJ and here you go. You find them like this at a garage sale for one or two bucks. You rip off the top. But if you find them in a garage sale for like this and they have really good tires with no flat spots, then on this one, I believe I sold this one for about $81. Tires are in good condition. I guarantee you the person that bought this just ripped this body right off, right? And maybe sold off the tires or something. Who knows? But that's what you want to do. Ordinarily, what you want to do is just detach the body and just sell the body as it is. Your shipping cost will be lower. But look for the new bright fj in fact when we're done this show just make a note research crawler body new bright okay and you're going to see the jeep and the fj being the two biggest ones you got to look for okay so new bright crawler body a very important thing to start looking at see that what the market shows you and there's two different colors of this there's going to be a blue one and a yellow one and then when you look at the new bright jeeps gosh those things can sell for like up to 150 bucks just the body guys you remember, like I pop on this thing, these things for like any between anywhere between. Well, now I pop on them between anywhere between one and ten, because I mean they're just so lucrative. They're kind of rare. They're like super rare. So, you know, make sure you um, look around for this kind of stuff, especially garage sale. I guarantee you, you go to a garage sale, this thing won't be any more than five bucks. Like no way. All right. So when you find it, get all happy. Congratulate yourself for learning something on a bona fide video, and get back to me on Facebook one day and tell me it worked. But yeah. Someone paid their green room, I think, fees with uh, one of the, two of these, if I'm not mistaken. His name was Tim. 
Um, but he, when he first came in, he showed me two of them that he found. I told him what the price it had and everything. He made his green room membership back in like one flip. So there you go. Pretty cool. Now, <laughs> I'm a gentleman. Um, thanks, Brian. I really appreciate that. See, Brian's pretty cool, man. He, he, he wanted to cuss, but he put some crazy lettering and everything. And, uh, yeah, he, he's on he's on board with me saying F that chassis. That's right. You don't you don't want the chassis of this thing. Normally you don't you gotta ditch all this stuff right here, okay? And um, but Brian Kingsbury is saying F that chassis because it's not worth anything. What's worth money is the wheels and the top. Now, I'm gonna show you a classic example of why you don't want to throw away the wheels when they look pretty sweet. When the real when the wheels look pretty interesting and pretty sweet, especially if they're giant wheels take a chance and sell them, right? See if you can detach them. It takes two seconds, detach them. It's like a screwdriver. And then it's four screws underneath to get this thing off and then just sell it body and then sell the wheels. I actually had a flip recently. Brock and I, Orange Elephant 523 and I went hustling six weeks ago and I went to a Savers, maybe four weeks ago. We went to a Savers and for $3, I popped on this gigantic new bright Jeep. Um, and the Jeep body sold the other day for 78 or maybe $83, something like that, about 78 to $83. Maybe it was $86.99 actually. The, the body itself sold. It was a lime green one. And then the wheels of the Jeep, they were so big. I was like, you know what? Hell with this. I'm taking a chance. And I sold those for like $29.99 or so, um, just the big ass wheels. So I'm going to give you an example of how to do all this. Now, let me take it to this one picture here. This freaking thing was huge, okay? And the body of this Baja Bug, which is, I believe, made by Newbright, if I'm not mistaken, this was a Newbright vehicle. Um, anyway, okay, this thing's huge. I'm talking this thing is uh, about half the size of a normal office desk. It's huge, okay? I can't show you the scale here because, but that those rocks behind it are 5 8 Black Star Gravel. Okay, that doesn't help you out at all, but you can see a leaf. Okay, so when you, this is a leaf from a Texas oak tree right here. That doesn't really help you very much either. So, but the wheels that were on it were big, all right? So here is definitely a ruler and they're seven inches tall, okay? Seven inches. So you detach the wheels from the big ass body. And the funny thing is this stupid car had a motor back here, like this weird motor sticking out. You know how VW bugs, these little Baja bugs have the motors sticking out the back. Even when you see them in real life, like the motor's in the back, right? So this thing had a crazy motor back there. And this dumb, mo this dumb motor, it was so intricate. I was like, you know what? I bet you someone's going to buy this thing. So here's the motor right here, disassembled, not even disassembled. It was like, what, two screws? This thing is made of plastic, but look how intense it looks in real life. Like, if I didn't tell you this was plastic, you'd probably be fooled. You'd be like, dude, Bonafide's putting a blower in his like forerunner. Like this guy's insane. This looks like a real motor, you know, with my pictures and everything. It looks pretty good. So this right here, I took off and I was able to sell, I believe this part for around 35 bucks. Just this stupid motor. It's not even a real motor. It's just a fake motor, right? But it looks like it has a Whipple supercharger and all this stuff on it. It looks like something from Mad Max. It's pretty crazy. So that alone was and it probably weighed three ounces i'm not even kidding this thing didn't weigh anything it's made out of plastic guys it's crazy but it's a scale motor so when i did my listing i was creative and i was very smart about it and i put uh, you know crawler scale and all these really important terms when you rc crawler scale motor uh chrome i put all these kind of things plastic and it sold i mean this thing is you know six inches you can see i put the measuring thing right there Amazing, right? And then I did this so people can totally, you know, the last thing you want is to box this thing up. This is what Bonafide does with all his finds. Boxes them all up and then he throws them in the garage with all the other boxes and he doesn't see it again until it ships, right? But the problem is when you're dealing with scale people, they're going to want measurements, okay? They're going to want like width, height, everything. So best to do is put a picture with all your little measurements so that way you don't get those dumb comments later or messages and then you have to reopen the box or you have to refine the item. You know what I'm talking about. So, um, the wheels, the wheels on this thing sold for about 30 bucks as well. God, these things are terrible. But anyway, they're big. Someone's going to put them on their crawler rig just for show. You know, maybe they're going to be at an RC meet and this thing's going to be up on a pedestal. No one's going to know the difference between hobby grade and consumer grade when it's like from far away. But these are really sweet looking. They had no flat spots. Flat spots are kind of like the deal killer when it comes to, you know, wheels. Um, so, and then honestly, this thing never sold. This body didn't even sell. Um, so yeah, I just threw that in the trash. So there you go. You know, that was like nothing. That was like 
three bucks and from three bucks i was able to extract 30 for the wheels and then this really sweet thing right here pretty cool huh all right i think that is let me see if that's the last picture i gotta show you guys i think that's it all right so uh this is the unfortunate time of the show where i gotta let you guys go you know i hope you had some fun and a couple laughs whatever um but if you like the show and if you were learning some things right some things that you can take to the field and start executing on and start learning a little bit more about items that are maybe out of your league or just out of your comfort zone that's what the show is all about so it's about showing you guys that you know through maybe me and some of my triumphs a or mistakes that it's possible to make money on the side and um, you know crank out a pretty interesting income stream just from flipping ordinary items you find at thrift stores, garage sales, and things like that. So um, I'm gonna read off a couple more uh, a couple more comments. Pinarello Rider, that's my spaceship in yellow. Yeah, I used to have an FJ. I actually own two FJs, and um, they're great vehicles, but uh, I went with a foreigner instead. But yeah, I, I'm familiar with the FJ. Um, Goodwill Ninja, thanks for the show. Streaming from a Goodwill parking lot right now. Hey, man, go into the Goodwill and see if you can find some of this stuff. Um, yeah, so that was a sweet flip. Never would have ever crossed my unbonafide brain, LOL. You know, I knew that the motor thing would probably surprise most people because, but I wasn't very surprised at, it, at all. Like when I, the, the crawling uh, genre of people, and one of the lead channels of crawlers um, that's really cool is called RC Spark Studio on YouTube. Anyway, I don't know the guy personally, but I think he's out of Canada maybe. And RC Spark Studio is a channel about all things, I would say RC, but mostly trucks and crawlers and really cool stuff. And through that channel, I mean, I already knew this even before the channel because I used to be really big in RC. And I, I knew that the P, these people build some really crazy rigs. And these rigs have... Um, you know, very intricate detail to them. And I'm talking down to the hose, the wire, some of their crawlers that they build have actual little shovels on them and little gas tanks and little this and GI Joe figures and that they put in there. I mean, it gets down to like amazing, amazing stuff to where when they put the camera down and they take footage of the crawler coming at it, you don't know if it's a real truck or a, a, a RC truck anymore. Like you cannot tell the difference. It gets so crazily like good like they do it so well they even paint rust on it um they do the bumpers to make it look like steel bumpers it gets really really cool um but if you want to look at a channel that does a lot of that stuff and you can kind of see where i'm coming from when it comes with the crawler trend um then definitely check out rc spark studio on youtube i think you'll really enjoy it i think he crossed a million subscribers not just the other day um Fantastic channel. This dude, all he cares about is RC stuff, and you'll get the, you'll you'll see where the big wheels fit in, and the crawler bodies and all that kind of stuff. When people build these trucks, um, there's a huge need and want for like Jeep bodies, Toyota bodies, uh, things like that. There's just there's a huge following for it, and people want to build their crawlers all over the nation, all over the world with these really nice bodies on them. So, um, anyway. Um, Diana Eden, you don't always have to test remote control stuff. It, it's I'll do a remote control car show. I mean, car show again on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's certain ones you want to test out and certain ones you don't. When you're dealing with these crawler body type things that are consumer grade, you know, then you're going to want to mess with that FJ cruiser that we saw. And don't forget to do some research and check out the new bright Wrangler body as well. And you're going to be blown away because you're going to get to see how you can, you can really flip you know, one to five bucks, one to 10 bucks. Now I've spent up to 10 on these things, but if, you know, for you guys that are just new in it, one to five bucks and turn this thing into like a solid 80 bucks, like really, really fast. Um, I'm talking super fast because the if you put the right stuff, you put the right words in the, uh, in the fields, don't be afraid, first of all, to ever echo off someone's listing and put sell similar because the top listing always has the best keywords. So don't ever, if you're playing around building your own ads out, that that's like for the birds, man. You got to echo off people's listings. That's so, so important. doesn't matter what you are putting on eBay. Do a little bit of research first, sort by highest, get that highest person or the one right around the highest and sell similar, you know, sell one like this or whatever. Very important because the keywords are strong on those top listings, okay? So when it comes to search, Yours will be found first, and people will probably think there's no alternative, so they buy yours instead. So there we go. Uh, you're very welcome, Diana Eden. And uh, 
um, Darren Eckelman, Bonafide Hustler Proxy Brigade in the full swing of the digital spaceship. That's right. We are Bonafide Brigade. That is what we are. So sell similar all the way, like Brooke Hayes says. I'll see you on the next actual Bonafide, Bonafide Hustler video, which is tomorrow. We have a live one. And if you want to see more Bonafide than tonight, we have a guy that is like really taking his FBA to the next level with his warehouse on the Bonafide, on the, on the Green Room Hangout. I'm just so Bonafide right now. But on the Green Room Hangout, guys, um, check that show out it's tonight it's live it's at 8 p.m central i think you'll really enjoy it and while i still have you on consider joining the green room right if you really like the information here and you want to surround yourself with 700 like-minded amazing people that know about reselling that are just give anything right they're so nice there's no negativity there's no weirdos there's no this or that join the green room i'm telling you right now you won't regret it um but yeah if i don't see you tonight all right then tomorrow there's going to be how to garage sale for profit number three. And that episode is going to be amazing. I got some really good tips for you guys to fire you up for the weekend. I'll take, uh, take it easy guys. And I'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye.